this is what's not right. I'm so sick that it's not right. Okay. Oh, it up on a Tuesday. Some bloopers here. <laughs> unfolding the show where every week we talk about everything from murder to conspiracy theories Woo. um to today sorry <laughs> this week <laughs> we are discussing darren dion van darren van is a suspected american serial killer who was arrested in october 2014 in hammond indiana at the age of 43 okay so we're gonna start in on his background let me just tell you it gets crazy this okay. man's, he's, he's something, let me tell you. <laughs> he's special. He's special. Okay, so, uh, Darren Van, also known as Donald Van, uh, was born in, on March 21st, 1971. Uh, he joined the United States Marine Corps in 91, but received an honorable discharge in 93 after he was arrested in Cherry Point, North Carolina. Um, we couldn't find anything at all on why he got arrested there. Like, we just know he was arrested. <laughs> It's nothing. <laughs> when we were doing research for this, this man, like, his background, there's nothing you can find. We searched his childhood, couldn't find anything. And the little bit of background information we have is all we could find. And we, I researched alone for probably, like, four hours. And then the next day I came over here and we worked from 3 a.m. to, what, almost 9 a.m.? Just about, yeah. And we could barely find any background information on At this all. man. It just don't exist. It's just not <laughs> there. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, Van was married in 95 for 16 years to Maria Van, who was around 30 years older than he was. Cougar! Screw that, man. I love them older women, honey. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maria's son, Edward Matlock, was never comfortable with his mother's marriage due to his age gap. Gap. His age gap. gap. <laughs> <laughs> um... Matlock also claims that Van often would talk to himself and seem to be lost in thoughts. Uh, he also was rumored to be spending a lot of time in rougher parts of Austin, Texas. Which is where they were living at the time. This man bounces around a lot, let me tell you. It's... Ugh. <laughs> um, Matlock has told CNN that this guy is a nutcase and uh, he'd be watching him. That uh, he'd never allow him near his kids or his home because it just freaked him out. Which, don't blame him. Listen to your mind, man. <laughs> listen, listen to your thoughts. Um, after moving back to Indiana from Austin, Texas, Matlock said he found the couple living in poverty. Uh, Maria filed di for divorce in August of 2009, and the marriage was officially dissolved in April of 2010. So... Obviously, things weren't great. <laughs> she made the smart decision. <laughs> she got out of there while she still could. <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, we know that tiny bit of information about his personal life. And then this is where he begins to start to get in trouble. So, he was reportedly arrested in Gary, Indiana for threatening the wife of his, at the time, girlfriend and was charged with a Class D felony and he ended up spending 90 days in jail. According to the affidavit tied to the incident, Van threatened to burn or blow up the house of the man that was giving his girlfriend shelter. In front of police, Van said that if the police didn't back up, that he would light himself and his girlfriend on fire as he wrapped his left arm around his girlfriend and his right one held a gasoline can and a lighter. Which I gotta add, 
he was still married at this time. Yeah, he was still married. Like, all this uh, girlfriend stuff is really a, his mistress. Yeah. Because they were well, still married at the time. Piece of so. action, you know? <laughs> you can't just have one, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess. And hold on. Speaking of which, how, like, how did his wife not do anything about this? Yeah. Like, there's nowhere anything that his wife said, like, there's nothing that says that his wife was like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Like, even, like, my brain can't wrap around the fact that all of this is going on and she's just like, oh, well. But then again, we But never... then again, she was 30 years older than him, so what if she was, like, an older woman that stayed at home all the time, didn't get out of the house, felt trusting. Yeah. It was like, this young man, he'd take care of me. Yep. That's a good point. Those are some cougars for you. But, after this, Van was convicted of sexual assault on September 28th of 2009 in Travis County, Texas. So now, we have bounced from Indiana to Texas. Doesn't say why he's in Texas. Doesn't say how he got to Texas. Now he's in Texas. He's just in Texas. He's in Texas. So, the assault that had taken place had occurred two years prior to um, his sentencing and conviction. It was it took place in 2007 in Austin when a 25 year old woman responding to a service call showed up at a apartment complex and entered an, entered an apartment with Van that did not belong to Van or herself. This is when Van reportedly struck the woman and sexually assaulted her multiple times. After this, he was sentenced to five years in a state penitentiary and was released on July 5th of 2013. And now is where it gets juicy. (laughs) This is where it gets real good. No, not good. Not good. good. It doesn't get good. It's just, this this is where where shit hits the fan. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so um, his... Technical first victim he got. Well, the first one found. It's not confirmed that she was the first victim. Yeah. But it was the first one found. Yes. So. Um, this is where was, the police chase starts, pretty much. Yes, this is where it mm-hmm. leads to him getting the rest of his sentencing. Exactly. Okay. Um, she was 19 at the time of her death. Uh, her name was Africa Hardy. Uh, Hardy was from Chicago, Illinois, but had moved to a... For, to... Who? Aurora, Colorado, <laughs> where she attended high school. After graduating, she back she back to Chicago after a few months prior to her death. Listen, we find these notes in the middle of the night. <laughs> we struggling. Um, Africa was working as a prostitute through Backpage.com. Uh, her pseudonym pseudonyms were Octavia <laughs> and Miss Youngin. Youngin. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> um, uh, a friend of hers named Shamika Cunningham helped Hardy set up her meeting with a man who went as Big Boy Appetite. Bet that Big Boy Appetite, baby. Bet you can't guess who that was. Who would that be? Hmm. Tell me. <sighs> Tell me, girl. <laughs> you know. I know, I know, but they don't know. <laughs> Big Boy Appetite was um, Darren's student. <laughs> Who would ever uh, thought? <laughs> so Darren requested her services at Motel 6 in Hammond, Indiana. Uh, this meeting was taking place on Friday, October 17th, 2014. Um it was reported that Van and Hardy met and had an argument erupted during sex on October 20th. Oh my gosh, October 17th. Um, Hardy's friend who had helped <laughs> who had helped set up the appointment became worried when she realized the appointment was taking way longer than normal. Uh, she texted Hardy to check and make sure everything was okay, but became worried And when she received a response that made absolutely no sense. And we looked to see what this response was, but we could not find anything. We couldn't find it anywhere. No replace... Repeat... Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> oh, I'm having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> all we could um, find is that it's suspected that the argument took place and all that, and then Darren had... Africa's phone and yeah. responded to the text from her friend trying to play it off as like she was okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, after to try to, oh. 
Girl. <laughs> I gotta get with it, man. <laughs> After trying to contact Hardy numerous times with no luck, Cunningham contacted a friend, Eduardo Aon, and headed to the motel where they found Hardy's body in the bathtub. Motel deceased. <laughs> Local dispatch was called to the motel around 9.25 p.m. So, according to reports, the bed had been jerked away from the headboard. A pillow was found in the bathroom, and it looked like it had blood on it. Now, I didn't see anything, unless you did, that confirmed that it was Africa, or even if it was Darren's blood, all I could find was that it looked like it had blood on it. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. I didn't even see any reports saying that she was bleeding. Yeah, um... But there was also a torn condom wrapper on the floor of the motel room and a small button that had been ripped off of a, like, a button-up shirt. And also, one of Africa's fingernails was found on the floor. So, law enforcement traced the request from Big Boy Appetite to Van and shortly after obtained a search warrant for Van's home. This is where they found condoms that matched the wrapper of the one found at the crime scene a cell phone that had matched the description of Africa's cell phone, and a shirt that was missing a button that also matched the button found at the crime scene. So, police take him in for interrogation, and this is where Van openly admits that he did have sex with Africa, and things began to get rough, um, and then he proceeded to strangle her to death. Um, Van then went on to confess to the murder of six more women and from there told officers where to find their bodies gross <laughs> <sighs> it almost makes you wonder why he does that like nobody said you know anything nobody about was pointing fingers being like yo did you kill this person or this they person? hadn't even found any of the bodies yeah he was just like you know what while we're here we're gonna talk let me this. tell you a story of what i did he could have gotten away with it. I'm not saying he should have. I'm not saying he should have, but all I'm saying what made him is if I was being held in interrogation and I had actually done something wrong, which I haven't, I don't break the law, okay? I'm a good kid. Anyway, <laughs> all I'm saying is that if somebody, like, had... Uh, it just don't make sense. Uh -huh. That's all we can get. I don't that. understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... Back to seriousness. Uh, three of the bodies uh, he led them to were at 413 East 43rd Avenue in Gary. Uh, these bodies were lady later identified as Aneth Jones, Sonia Billingsley, and Tanya Gatlin. Um, Aneth Jones was 35 at the time. Uh, Van told detectives that he was paid $500 by a friend to kill her due to an upcoming legal matter. Now, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I, there's not a friend in the world that I could call and be like, hey man, I got this problem. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> not for $500. <laughs> okay. Um, according to the affidavit, Van and the friend had planned that he would pretend to be soliciting sex from Jones, who often work as a prostitute. Which seems like a lot of these murderers go for prostitutes, which in you know in and itself is horrifying. I Why have trust is issues that? just with somebody walking past me on the yeah. sidewalk. I couldn't even imagine. But I mean, I guess it is a different mindset if you are in like sex work because I mean now in 2021. Different forms of sex work are literally like day to day jobs now. True. So, in this time era, and especially in Gary, Indiana, prostitutes are probably very common. But at the same time, like, why are they always prostitutes? They're just trying to make their money. Right, they're just trying Feed to feed their families. Make ends meet. Like, they're not. But instead, they're going to get a knife to the neck, a rope around the neck. Like, why? I don't understand. It's not fair. It's not fair. Um, Van said he had sex with her and then strangled her to death for about five minutes using a thin rope before moving 
her to the abandoned home and going to babysit his brother's children. That is the most messed up thing I've ever heard. Um, anybody in the back there, did you hear that? Brother's let, children. Let me say it again for the people in the back, all right? <laughs> <laughs> like, how messed up in the brain that's, you have okay, to be that's to how murder you know a woman? This man is a psychopath. He's like, I just killed this girl, but now I'm going to watch these kids. That's how it's going to go. Woo. No way. No. no. I can't even fathom it. Boy, I can't even litter and then look at my little brother. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Let alone could I kill another kill human somebody. being and then just go on about my day like I did nothing wrong. Right. Girl, I got anxiety. <laughs> um, so the last victim was found with Sonia Billingsley. Uh, they were in the room together, I guess, and it didn't specify. Uh, Tanya Gatlin, uh, she was 27 when she had passed. Uh, she was a, a mother of a two-year-old son. Um, we couldn't really find a whole lot on her, but what we do know is that she uh, struggled with addiction and hadn't spoken to her family in almost a year, according to her mother. Yeah, that's really sad. <laughs> and then also, Sonya, I don't, I don't think you touched on it. I think you may have skipped over it. <laughs> oh. But Sonya, she disappeared on oh. February 7th, which is my birthday. Um, she disappeared on February 7th, uh, and her family reported that she left the house making phone calls and wasn't planning on being gone long because she left with curlers in her hair, and then she never returned. And if we know any women? There ain't no way I'm going to leave the house with curlers in my hair mm -hmm. and never come back. Mm -hmm. No. But we got some more girls that were found... In other abandoned homes, I would just like to state, this man used abandoned homes as his dumping ground. All over this, all over this. All city. over Gary, Indiana. And we also saw some reports saying that he used to use these houses, these same houses where he kept these bodies at the same time for um, haunted house attractions. Yeah, he, he would. And he would prop their bodies for yeah, it. Yeah, he would, he would like, um, you know, like you go into a, like a haunted attraction. And they have, like, the mummies propped up against the walls, laying on the floor, stuff like that. He would use dead bodies and use them as, like, prop dummies. But people would be so horrified by, number one, the smell of decaying corpses. Yeah, they would go running. And they would run away. Plus, I feel like if I was to see an actual decomposing body, I would know the straight difference. away that that's not a prop dummy. Right. I mean... From, yeah, I mean, I, I think. I'm pretty certain. It's, well, it's, it would give it the smell. The, okay, the, the smell, smell would be a dead giveaway. But plus, like, even if I saw it from a distance, like, I'd be like, mm. either whoever made that is really talented See, or... See, that's what I'm saying. There's that's still a chance, body. but... But, in, okay, no offense it's to... It's the smell. No, no offense to anybody from here in Indiana, <laughs> but... <laughs> We all know, if you're from Indiana like we are, you know Gary, Indiana is not the place you want to be. You know. If you've seen our uh, number one man in my life, Zach from oh Ghostbusters, <laughs> if you've seen his documentary on um, the Portal to Hell House, you know that town is not the grip. It's not, it's not the best town. Everybody knows it. It's got a bad rep. What my point of this was... <laughs> I went on a tangent for a second. I saw Zach, and I was like, oh, I'm a man. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, no offense to anybody from there, but unless you live, like, more toward the Chicago area, like the out outskirts of Gary, Indiana, there's no way you're going to be able to afford <laughs> a really good prop dummy. Yes. You could have just said a smaller town. <laughs> but then I went on a tangent. Okay, my but brain yes. my brain goes in different ways sometimes. All anyway. Right. Back with the story. Back to the story. We got some other ladies. <laughs> Unfortunately. Unfortunately. So our next victim that we're going to come up with is Tracy L. Martin. She had been missing since June of 2014, and her body was found in another abandoned home littered with junk located... At 2200 Massachusetts Street in Gary. She was found in the second story of this home in a closet and was choked to death with her own necklace, which was still on her corpse when they found it. And what is the most messed up about this one is police had been in this same abandoned home 48 hours prior. 
and completely overlooked the second story bedroom closet that she was in. So she was in this house that the police were in searching for her. They were specifically there searching for her. For her mummified body. Yeah. And they didn't find it. And uh, I think even the smell would give it away. Like, well, once they're mummified, do they still smell? Maybe. Uh-huh. I would say there'd at least be some type of smell. There would have to be some type of smell. Either way, they completely overlooked it. Yeah, which is <clears throat> absolutely stunning to me. And another messed up thing about this situation. Van told police that he killed Martin basically just because he was mad and that was the first person that he saw. Yo, that's... Talk about bad luck, man. Seriously horrifying. Yeah. Like, imagine you're just walking down the street, just walking along, and all of a sudden... You see this angry man, and you wind up in a closet. Yeah, no. No, I'm good. <clears throat> Makes me never want to leave the house. Yeah, same. I don't leave the house anyway. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, our uh, next victim is Tierra Beatty. She was 28 at the time of her death, and she was found at an abandoned home at 1800 East 19th Avenue, and she was last seen and spoken to on January 13th. That's the only information we have on her. We don't have a lot. Um, there wasn't really a report of Van saying why he killed this woman. And our next victim will be Christine Williams, who was 36 at the time of her death. And she was found at an abandoned home at 4330 Massachusetts Street. Van said that he murdered her over $40 worth of crack that Van had sold her at an earlier time. And in his mind, she had skipped jail to avoid paying Van... I say skip jail. Yes. <laughs> skip town. But really, she was in jail. That's what I meant. <laughs> she was in jail for a few days. She was in jail for a few days. Um, but once she was released, Van hunted her down and strangled her before placing her in a basement of an abandoned home, covering her with a plastic drop cloth. And by the time she was found in 2014, she was so badly decomposed that they were only able to identify her by her dental records. Which is... That's far off. Yeah, that's... I can't even... I I can't even think of a timely manner that would have put her there. Because it almost seems like it... You know, I should know this shit because I went to school for paralegal studies, but I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I should know the decomposing rate of a body. But it's been too long, man. It's been too long. It... I want It had to have been at least over six months. So I feel like that. that would pay that would place her like at the beginning. Way early. Actually, I have it on a separate little note sheet over there. It says that Beatty was the first victim and reportedly um Williams was the second. And then Gaitlin and Billingsley were the third. <coughs> It, it don't matter. We had a hard time with this. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, there was also two unidentified victims that were found. Um, one woman described by authorities as a Jane Doe, of course. Uh, she was wearing a silver-colored chain-linked bracelet that said Best Aunt when investigators found her. Um, on Tuesday, Lake County Coroner Mary Lee D. Frey asked for help identifying the five foot three inch woman who said she was wearing a silver colored ring with a heart shaped I don't know the word for it. <laughs> she had a heart shaped ring on. Yeah. Um, another Jane Doe uh, a five foot woman wearing a pair of size 3 21 black by Drew 21 and blue and white Nike gym shoes. Um, investigators haven't released a description of a third identified victim yet. But there was another one. There was a third one. There was a third one. And also, if you haven't pieced this together by us telling you, um, he dumped his bodies all within walking distance of each other. Yeah, they like, were all there's within an five map. miles. Yeah, if there's, there's an actual map of Gary, Indiana, and it has all the points that these bodies were found. And they're all in walking distance of each other. So he's stuck to the same area. This is awful. 
Um, now we're gonna get in trial, and the trial is so scattered and back and forth. Yeah, so if it's... we mess up a lot <laughs> giving you information about this trial, I'm so sorry, but this is one of those trials where he knew he, he knew was in he was... some deep shit. Yes. And he was trying to do anything that he could to postpone this trial. So just, just keep, you know. So buckle in and get ready, give baby. A, you know, give <laughs> us a chance here. Um, so um, his original trial date was set for June 22nd, 2015. But was canceled on April 17th when the request for the death sentence was filed. Uh, his trial date for June 22nd then subsequently restored itself. Somehow. Hmm, wonder how. <sighs> There's no telling. <laughs> Um, Van's attorneys requested that the trial be delayed, so then being moved to January 25th, 2016. In December 2015, uh, Lake Superior Court Judge Diane Ross Boswell removed herself from the case, and the then Judge Samuel Kathas said he would take the case. So, uh, after a change of judge, the date was then set for July 25th of 2016, and then, in April of 2016, Judge Kappas denied a motion by Van's attorney to sever the murder cases of Anna Jones and Africa Hardy. And, as a result, the capital murder, murder trial in said cases would be continued as one. So, with Jones and Hardy, instead of being tried as two separate murder cases, those ones were being tried together. I'm not really sure why. I don't think it ever said why. No, I never saw any reason. I don't know. But those ones are being tried as one. So, um, then in November of 2016, Judge Kappas denied Van's motion to, de to declare the state's death penalty unconstitutional. Because, you know, he... He's trying to make his way around it. Yeah, he's just trying to get out of the situation when he's not going to. Yeah. So, um... At a status hearing in April of 2017, Judge Kappas set jury selection to begin the week of February 12th in 2018. Um, in October of 2017, Judge Kappas delayed the trial date with jury selection beginning on September 17th, 2018, and the trial itself to begin on October 22nd of 2018. And then... Um, this is when I think Van realized that he was not going to get out of this. And yes, and the end was near. The end was near. There was no getting out of it because, number one, he confessed to it already. Like, he can plead not guilty all he wants, but in interrogation, he already confessed and led police to the body. Right. So, on May 4th of 2018, he pleaded guilty to seven counts of murder, um, and a plea agreement dropped the death penalty. So, instead of being put to death, he would just spend life in prison. Yeah. So, um, on May 25th of 2018, Van was sentenced to seven concurrent life sentences without parole. And now, he currently, to this day, is in Wabash Correction, Correction Facility in Carlisle, Indiana. And if you're not from Indiana, um, Terre Haute, Indiana, if you know where that is, where um, the big college, Indiana State University is, it's around that area. I hope he never, ever gets out of jail, ever. I mean, with no. seven, unless he's a vampire. <laughs> well. Because he, seven concurrent life sentences, like. There's been some, like, crazy things happen to people that do not deserve to get out of jail, and they get out of jail. Yeah. As long as they keep that no parole going. Yeah, he doesn't have happy. parole, so. I don't think he'll get out, though. I don't think so. Either. If he does, then that just proves that our justice system is very messed up. Which, if we're being honest here, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> Listen, I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, that's all we have for today. Um, we're gonna try and do videos every week, probably Mondays, Tuesdays. But you know, this is just the beginning of us starting out now. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you actually listen to this thing, you know, thanks, Ed. We really appreciate it. Anything Feel free to, to tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Share this to the world. <laughs> we out here doing it. We'll get better. It was Maybe. <laughs> it was a little rough this time, but we'll get better with it. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>